Hey friends, Charles here. The video you're about to watch is actually part two of a two-part live webinar. The first part was on weights and biases and Keras. There's no direct dependence between the two, but you may hear me referring to part one in a couple of places. If you're curious about how weights and biases and Keras work together, you should definitely check out that video. What I wanted to focus on actually was to dive into more about what can be done with wandb.log. Let's dive into that because that is very pretty. We're going to go to this log almost anything with WNB Media. That one is also going to be located in our Colabs repository right here. Log almost anything with WNB Media. Open that bad boy in Colab if you want. Let's get ourselves set up here. Uh, get ourselves logged in. We're pulling down a bunch of data for this one because what I'm going to show you is how you can take all different kinds of data, not just the typical media you would think of, but all kinds of media, and log them into weights and biases so that you can track your experiments in a super flexible way. Logging a metric, that's pretty simple. You call wanb.log with a dictionary where the key is a sort of column name and the value is what you want to log. What are we doing here? We're getting the Apple stock price history, and we are looking at the closing price each day and logging that to weights and biases. One thing I actually like about this media collab is that it, it doesn't depend on any machine learning libraries. Weights and biases is unopinionated enough about what you are doing that it's not really a, a machine learning tracking system so much as it is a data tracking system. If you're like me and you love the idea of like a general purpose tool that you can get to do things that, you know, no one should have made it do, that's exciting to you. This one is relatively straightforward. In the Jupyter output, uh, we can see the stock price is being logged here. Uh, and if we look at that run on the project, we can see that's our stock price. Look at that nice random walk we can do a lot of stuff with these charts, by the way. It's a random walk up there on Wall Street. I don't want to be looking at just all of that noise. What I want is a smooth version like that. We got a lot of stuff that we can do here. There's something uh, appealing about a log scale for stocks because they, you know, fundamentally, they grow exponentially uh, in percentages usually. There's, uh, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do there to adjust those charts. But this isn't a charts demo. This is a media demo. I should focus. Let's keep going on this media here. We present a lot of options for charts. We've got a lot of things already built in. And we're also rolling out a new custom charts feature that says anything you can do in Vega, you can do inside weights and biases. And if you know what you can do in Vega, let's just say that one of their core demos is implementing Pac-Man as a Vega chart. So a Vega chart is a very uh, a general object. What we also do is let you log matplotlib plots. You just need to pass the figure in to wanb.log. We'll figure out what it is that you're giving us and log it correctly. Let's take a look. Obviously, it'll pop up in your Jupyter notebook if you've got matplotlib inline turned on. I think this is the Fibonacci sequence that we're logging here. Why not? It's a great set of numbers. We turn it into a plotly plot for you rather than a matplotlib one. You know, matplotlib plots, once they're rendered, they can be pretty static, but plotly plots have a lot more things like we can zoom in to look really closely at this thing. Uh, we can go back to where we started. Plotly was designed to be interactive, whereas you know Matplotlib was designed to be static. It was designed with the core use case being creating scientific figures for scientific papers, whereas Plotly was created with the core use case being interactive dashboards like this. So Plotly is a better fit in a lot of ways for something like weights and biases than Matplotlib. But you can still write your chart in Matplotlib and we'll do the conversion for you into Plotly. One thing you might want to visualize is a histogram, right? So one thing that we often log in our integrations are things like the values of the gradient on each step or the values of the weights on each step. Let's initialize a new run that logs a histogram on each step. It's a Fibonacci sequence that gets divided by the step at each point. The histograms will get logged on our run page. There we go. So you can see that nice pattern, the nice little one over X kind of shape there in the curve. And we've got these cute little histograms. We, we present a conditional histogram on each time step so that you can see their changes over time. We're trying to emphasize how did this histogram that you logged change over time? But then you can highlight individual columns here and see what did it look like at this point? We've got histograms. We got a little KDE going for you there, a little kernel density estimate as well. Nice little Gaussian bumps. You get all of this stuff 
for free by just giving us an array of data. Just to clarify there, I, I didn't have to, you know, use np.histogram, use plt.histogram, anything like that. I just called wanb.histogram on this array here. One thing I did want to emphasize, there's a, a general flow in all of these logging cells, which is we initialize a new run, we generate some data, we log that data, and then we finish our run. So all of them, if you look, are going to look like that. Initialize, generate data, log it, close out. And that's really nice. It keeps things nice and simple. You know, it's so simple relative to what you would have to do otherwise if you wanted to not only log this stuff, but also hook it into whatever visualization framework you're using or versioning stuff that you're doing uh, to track it over time. All this stuff, it's already in there in uh, WNB. You can also log images. Right here, we're pulling in an image from uh, just a JPEG image, but this could also be images. Maybe your neural network generates an image and you either save it as a JPEG or maybe you keep it as a NumPy array. We can handle that with wanb.image here. We used wanb.histogram before, uh, now we're using wanb.image. This is a class that takes the data that you have and it gives you some ways to provide metadata that we understand so that that metadata can be logged as well. For example, captions. If our wanb callback for whatever framework it is you're using, whether it's Keras, PyTorch, PyTorch Lightning, PyTorch Ignite, if our callback isn't doing exactly what you want, you can get real jiggy with it with um, these uh, wanb media types. So let's take a look at what that logged on that run. Oh, it's a nice picture of this cafe here of some folks just enjoying some sparkling water and some coffee. Gosh, man, that was so much fun before this global pandemic. That was really great. Uh, RIP cafes. A question for, can I log multiple images at once? Yes, we're doing wanb.image uh, on a single image. What you want to do is you want to do a list of images here. So it would be like, take this and then do wanb.image m2 caption equals uh, get stick bugged, whatever it is that your other image is. The way to do that wouldn't be to type everything out explicitly, but to do a for loop or a list comprehension to set up your images. Thanks for that question. In a lot of this stuff, I'm logging only one thing. You could always log multiple things at once on any given step or log them across lots and lots of steps. For simplicity's sake, we're sticking to just logging a small number of things. Another thing that you might want to log, you might want to log a sequence of images to be viewed as a film. We log video with wanb.video. The main use case for this is probably reinforcement learning so that you can watch how your agents are performing. That's why in this example, we're using a video generated with OpenAI's gym for reinforcement learning agents. That's the main thing I've used video for. The other thing you might do is computer vision and video, object segmentation through video is another one you might use wanb.video for. And let's check out what that looks like. Okay, so we've logged the video and it is now playing here, nice and big. So there you go, we got Space Invaders playing here. We can see how this reinforcement learning agent is doing. Not so bad at all, actually. Look at that, pretty impressive. Let's go back to our collab and press on to more of the things that we can visualize. We can log audio data. Here we've got a wave file. Maybe you're doing text to speech. Maybe you're doing speech to text and you want to track what went into the model when it produced some text that you didn't want it to produce. So you can log the wave file on there with wanb.audio similarly to wanb.image, but you don't actually have to use wave files for images and for audio. You can just give us a numpy array. And if it's the right dimension uh, to be an image or to be audio, then we'll turn it into audio for you. So I made this strange boop noise. It's a sine wave that gets faster. That's what this code is here. This is generating the data. Then we log it here with this wanb.log here. It looks just the same as if you were logging a file, uh, but now it's a waveform, which is something that would come out maybe if you're using WaveNet to generate audio data. It also means that if you really wanted to, you could listen to your latent states. You could log your latent states of your big networks as waveforms, and we turn them into audio for you. I'm going to take a look at this. This is, it's a wild sound. The other thing that we'll do for you is we can log tables. We love tables of weights and biases. It's, it's tables all the way down, actually, if you want to know what's up uh, in our app. It's all, it's all tables on tables tables holding tables. We'll let you add another layer of table to that stack with wanb.table. The idea here is on a given step, you don't want to just log, this is the input image, this is the output. You want to structure it into a table on WNB that you can then search and, and uh, sort and stuff like that. 
So there's two different ways to make a, a WANB table. You can make it all at once by passing the data in to wanb.table and giving it columns. This stuff here kind of looks like maybe the way you'd make a pandas data frame, right? In Python, people think of data frames first before they think of table as the name. So this is basically, you know, a data frame if you're more familiar with the pandas library. You can also create it in a sort of row by row fashion where you set the columns first and then you add the data. This is often a pretty natural way of doing things if you're generating the rows with your algorithm. Maybe it's taking an input since producing these things as outputs like predicted label here. You'd use this iterative add data thing which adds rows to the table. Either way that you do it, you can log it uh, with wanb.log. Let's check out our run page here. Here's our nice table. And you can do a couple of things here. You can search here. It'll be paginated for you, uh, depending on how many rows you show. This is a couple simple table features. And this is a useful one for natural language processing. I think the folks at Hugging Face who've integrated with weights and biases use this table format quite a bit. Oh, arbitrary sounds, arbitrary images, arbitrary video, you know, but this is not arbitrary enough for me. One thing that we log, which gives you real free reign is logging HTML. If you'd like, you can write some HTML that renders a small web page. Maybe your model's gonna be serving as an iframe. So it's, you know, rendering its results in HTML. You'd like to track that while you're doing training. How does this look? Well, you could do something like that with this wannb.html. Uh, let's take a look at the results of this HTML logging here. All right, we got a custom string to a link. You would probably want to put a link to a website that does exist here. Uh, you can also write little notes to yourself is another use of this HTML. So that's a fun one. We've also got some stuff that's maybe more specialized to stuff that gets done in machine learning these days. One is 3D objects. We can log 3D object files, uh, this .obj format. You know, these are pretty hard to render in Python, I have found when I try and figure out how to do this but we've got it figured out for you. Now look at that, uh, look at that handsome wolf. Look at that little low polygon count wolf with a handsome beard. Maybe you're designing a neural network that generates meshes for um, 3D objects, or maybe it takes a high polygon object to a low polygon object or the other way around. We, we've got you covered with our little 3D object renderer. Uh, maybe a more common use case than that three object rendering is point clouds. These show up in, in LiDAR uh, most commonly. Point cloud is a bunch of points in 3D space, usually measured by like, you know, shooting out a laser to pick up the position of surfaces in 3D space. Often, actually, neural networks are there to try and take an image and turn it into a point cloud. How do I take an image and determine where are all of the things in 3D space? Uh, 1B.object3D, which was used to log that 3D object up there, that can also be used to log point clouds. You just got to log it in the right format, which is this uh, LiDAR style format here, described uh, in this uh, documentation here, then it will get rendered as a 3D scene on weights and biases that you can then interact with. What did we do here? We built two boxes here uh, with two different sets of corners, and then we threw some random points into the middle of it. When you're logging these like object 3D things the and point clouds, you, you just need a bunch of 3D vectors collected together, uh, and then we can render them with different aesthetics. So let's check that out point cloud. Look at that. We got our two boxes there and we'll pull that up. So we got our two boxes there, the uh, one box and box two. Uh, and inside of box, we put all those random points. That's that nice little galactic cluster of red stars there in the center of the box. This is fully interactive, so you can take a look at it and really analyze, okay, did my, what, what did my neural network do right? What did my neural network do wrong as it made this you can keep spinning this until it makes you a little bit sick, which is what I did uh, yesterday when I was playing around with this thing. Whatever you can turn into a you know, Blender 3D object, we'll render it for you so you can take a look at it. Hopefully that gives you a sense for you know, just how many things we can visualize with the WNB Media uh, Toolkit. And it's ever expanding. Uh, we've got some stuff for logging molecule 3D structures, and we're always looking for new things to add. We want to make the most useful tool possible for the community. We are out there reading about what people have done, talking to people about what they've done, but we really appreciate feedback about, hey, I wanted to do this thing with weights biases, and it was not a, the most joyful experience of my day. If any time you're using WNB and it's not the most joyful experience of your day, we want to hear about it because we want to fix it and make that experience joyful. 
So on that front, if you're ever in our interface and something less than maximally joyful occurs, go ahead and click this intercom button in the bottom right hand corner. Start talking to us. Our user reply time is under 10 minutes. That's great. We've been working hard to get that reply time down so that you don't feel like we aren't listening because we are. I pop into that channel quite a bit uh, for user stuff when it's stuff that I know about and can help with or we hear about what they're doing. So please do send us a message on that front. Thank you all so much for coming. And I hope to see you around in our intercom channel, in our Slack forum, on Twitter, uh, and out there in the world of machine learning with weights and biases. Thanks for coming and uh, goodbye. Hey friends, Charles here. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you want more Weights and Biases tutorial and demo content, subscribe to our channel. And if you got any questions, comments, ideas for future videos, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you.